So what we're talking about now is we're having a, a, a developers meeting um, uh, on the question of what we will, what kinds of things we will need in order to be able to interconnect uh, web worlds. Uh, and we thought initially that web worlds connection would be simpler, and it probably is going to prove to be simpler um, as than connecting all of the all of the um, vir virtual worlds that would make up the metaverse. But we're now going over the technical problems that we will encounter in order to deal with, um, in order to make interconnections work and do the kinds of things we want to be able to do um, in um, web worlds. So, and Evie is talking about the technical problems she has actually been working on uh, and talking with a, a working group um, about how this can be done. So, Evie, why don't you sort of bring us up to date? I believe the problem, the main problem you identify is the avatar. Other problems, it seems, many other problems, I think, are, are fairly straightforward and, and rather easily soluble. Um, such as the intercommunication inter matter. But the main thing we want to bring, bring across is the avatar, and we have to deal with the avatar uh, bones, which are different in different, di different um, group, uh, well, pretty much in many different places. Um, so now, Evie, would, would you like, would you summarize the problem with the avatar that you see now? Sure, sure. Okay, so so right now we're using an avatar um, in a GLTF format, and the animations are banked, baked inside of the avatar. And in order for us to use those animations, um, there those animations that are baked in have to be called. So ideally, the animations would be separate and not baked in. And uh, that's what we're looking at now, as well as other people looking at how can I walk in with with an avatar with the same skeleton or a skeleton that can be recognized and apply those animations. So if we walk from 3D web worlds into a completely different foreign world, um, not only do we want to take our, our presence, you know, of what we look like, but we also want to take the ability to walk, you know, use the standard walk where our feet move forward when we're, when we're moving forward. Um, as well as simple animations. So it, 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 it's a bigger issue than, than originally thought between different technologies um, because there's no standard yet. So if there was any kind of standard protocol where it said, okay, if we, if we all do this, these 10 things, then an avatar will have an easier time crossing over. Um, well, that, that, um, actually, the thing that first comes to mind is Ready Player Me has a collection of standard avatars, correct? Well, you do create um, avatars uh, through that. You can create avatars through that console, and I'm wearing a Ready Player Me avatar right now. Um, so the worlds themselves, though, are what control the animations. So because every world is handling the animations a little bit differently at the moment, um, that's a big deal, you know, because when you when you cross over, if you can't walk, you you kind of feel a little strange, right? So, uh, right, right. So, um, and there there are things that that I've seen a few examples of things that we're working towards, and also, um, you know, naming the skeletons and and having some sort of standard that that developers can follow is is the first step. And I know, you know, we're working on it in the interoperability group um, for OMI. Um, and and that, that's by no means saying that that's going to be the only standard. There could be another working group out there saying we're going to create a standard. Mm -hmm. So there's there's no real presence at the moment for us to create something. But at least with, there's groups of people that are gathering together trying to find the best solution. And, and that's where we are right now. And of course, um, also uh, an issue, um, especially for browser worlds, um, well, okay, a couple things. So let's let's just talk browser worlds for a moment. Uh, when I cross over into another world and say say that, that they are compatible, that I can just walk through a portal with my avatar into another world, mm -hmm. um, if they don't, if there's a cross-origin problem where they will not accept the asset from my server, 
you know, from where the original avatar is created, and I'm carrying that over, and the cross origin is denied, then you, you know, that world will not be able to accept the avatar skinned mesh. Yeah, well, that would be a matter of the of the whoever is operating the world um, putting in the correct code to let it be accepted or not. Correct. And there there are securities and reasons why people may or may not want to do oh, that. Yeah. But hopefully in the future, that will also become um, easier. You know, perhaps um, agreements can be made between different worlds where assets from different servers can be accepted. Yeah. Um, I well, see that probably be, that's probably going to be the first step where, you know, a few worlds make an agreement and open up the origin from those worlds. Mm -hmm. So that the, if a few, may, a few worlds make an agreement, then that begins to create a standard. Um, because right. then other worlds that want to join this coalition would have to comply with that standard. Um, right, right. But this also does not, um, that, that's for web-based browser worlds, you know, yeah. uh, uh, for, the, for the worlds, are, which there are many, where you actually have to download a file yeah, well, um, well, wait, wait, wait. And, uh, I, I'm, right now I'm focusing the thinking entirely on the web worlds because okay. I think they are somewhat simpler. I think, actually, I thought they were going to be a lot simpler, and I still think they will be a lot simpler. Uh, and I think also there might be a better chance of getting cooperation among web worlds than among the general world of, right. that are becoming well, conceivably part of the meta metaverse. Right, and there there is another option in that um, you know I, I've been thinking about it for years. I'm I'm not exactly sure the best way to implement it, but that would be a, like a virtual world passport. And so um, basically, you have accounts on all of these different worlds, mm -hmm. and and um, instead of have if you know if you're already logged into one world, if you have the right credentials, perhaps saved in your session work or. Um, you know, uh, uh, XML, mm -hmm. you know, some sort of, of credentials on your system that would allow you to walk through the portal from one world to another. And while your avatar doesn't actually carry because you have an appoint, uh, you have an account in both worlds, uh, you could cross over and instantly be in the look that you have in that world. So as an example, let's say that you have a world that only has dinosaur, dinosaur avatars. <laughs> Yeah, I understand. In, right. So you you would cross through the portal, and then you would instantly transform into your dinosaur uh, dinosaur avatar from that world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, I'm I'm thinking that the the um, that that second description. I have another all in mind. Another alternative that might be might be. Uh, well, probably is not going to be, but might be easier. And that is a a, uh, a hub. We talked about that, uh, but we didn't talk about the details of a general hub um, that would, because a, a hub could handle all of the connections to the various um, uh, web worlds, even though they had different char characteristics. And it would not, um, I'm not quite sure what it would do about uh, avatars, but one thing it could do, obviously, it is um, uh, simply not to try to transfer the avatars, but simply transfer you to a, 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 a guest avatar in the other world. Right. And, and we do actually, the mymetaversehub.com uh, is, is uh, really ready to go, except, um, you know, we're, we're looking for additional worlds to join on that. Mm. And, and how that works is, um, you know, you touch the portal and you teleport to another world, but if you're not logged into that world, you would be presented with a login page. Mm -hmm. So, um, we, uh, we're 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 ahead in the sense that we're wanting to work with others, but um, th we haven't found any others that are quite ready yet to do that. So, um, hopefully, perhaps your video will will reach out to people that are like, "Oh yeah, we're ready. Bring well, it on." <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I, I have found some somebody in. Uh, in the in my Reddit metaverse group, um, that's very much interested in doing this, um, and so I think so. Um, I think this will feed some information to him and basically provide information that he would be able to 
might be able to use when, in working with other people. I do think that there is a considerable uh, potential uh, in web worlds for people to, to um, benefit from being able to connect. I, I really don't see much attraction. I would not see much attraction to the idea of being registered in half a dozen uh, web worlds. Because I've got that, yeah, that, that's half a dozen passwords that I have to deal with, and I can't use the same password, um, and I'm, and uh, therefore, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, that's an extra trouble. Even though well, I, I won't have to use that very often, but I do have to keep track of it because someday I will need it. I, I will tell you, and I shouldn't admit this being an IT professional, but Google has me spoiled in that they have this new uh, password creation feature. And I have several websites that if I use Google to create a password, it just has Chrome remember it for me. Mm -hmm. And I have my Chrome account signed in on multiple devices. So if I'm on my phone and I need to get into whatever it is, uh, then, then that password's available to me. And I uh, well, the, yeah, well, the thing is about not having a password for each, um, each world is, uh, let's take it to extremes. Okay, let's say that we have a hub where we can access five different banks, right? All different owners, different accounts. Mm -hmm. There's, you're going to have to have a password to enter into that company's area. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't really see any way around having the account. Now, having to enter your password, uh, if you're logged into one and, and crossing into another, you know, that might be something that can be achieved. And what really would, would need to happen first, and we can do this interoperability on several different levels. You know, right now between web worlds, we can simply provide links and, and, and help each other by creating more traffic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what that requires is all the devs to come together and agree to that common goal. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that we, we're putting a call out. In fact, I'll use your video right now. So be, let's put a call out to all devs that want to, you know, connect these web worlds. I am willing. Uh, we have a couple of domain names for uh, my metaverse hub uh, that we, we could actually work together to create something that is, makes everyone happy. Um, in order to be able to advertise that one thing where all the worlds are represented, you know, represented so that we can get traffic and we could put up event calendars and, and work together not to cross over events so that people are constantly trans, uh, transferring back and forth on uh, different days. Uh, I, there's a lot of potential here for people to work together. And, well, and um, yeah, and especially for the web worlds which don't have a huge number of people. Now, if you go, and if you go into Second Life, you, uh, you you can find events every day in Second Life, and actually a bunch of different events. But that's because they have a large number of people. In, in web world, no single web world is going to be able to uh, uh, accomplish that. Not However, at that number, right? Yeah. However, if we have multiple web worlds interconnected, and this is of course what we have in in the hypergrid, because of the hypergrid, we. We have, they're all, all a bunch of worlds that are interconnected, and we can go to the, the various events in these various different worlds, and I do, and uh, Jamie does, um, and we, so we, we basically, we use that advantage, and the same game, kind of thing can, can be true, could work in, um, in web worlds. Uh, right, exactly. And, you know, we're, we're going to, we, we have a plan that, of course, will be altered if other people step up and say, hey, we want to work with you and here's some great ideas. And um, I, I'm sure that, that when devs start getting together, there's going to be a, a huge brainstorming session. Um, you know, at this point, we're working on getting some sort of standard on the avatar so that we can, at the best case scenario, cross our avatar to different worlds. And then we'll work on... Um, duplicating 3d web worlds by handing it to a couple of devs that that want to create their own metaverse um and then we'll then we'll have you know different web worlds on different servers r run by different people and see if we can interconnect where we're actually crossing those avatars through portals 
um, that will be our first step. And then the next step would be um, crossing avatars to a completely foreign entity that was built with different technology and uh, different animations and see how we can make that work. So it's well, really exciting. It should be an exciting year with as fast as technology is moving. Who knows, uh, you know, what we'll be able to accomplish this year. Yeah. Well, so um, I made a list of user experience with the connection that I had in, actually have derived from the uh, uh, fr from the hypergrid. And so I'd like to run over that list to see, because we've talked about in particular about avatar trends and avatar is moving and that's one of the major major fish features but it's not the only one and some of those others i think probably can be achieved pretty easily in a uh, web world um now uh, so let's let's, let's um, let me go over the list and then and i've already the top of the list yes is user can teleport to another web world using his avatar uh, and the uh, user can carry fully owned assets um, to another web world and use them there. Uh, and um, then I've, I've got some notes about fully owned. The, but the, to carry the assets, the user puts them in a suitcase following the hypergrid technique. Um, and that suitcase is, is of course, a small, a limited, well, just a list, a list of links to the data, to the um, grid database. Uh, but it establishes items that can be carried, can be moved over into another place if they and they have to have been fully owned in order to go there, go into the web into the suitcase, right? Right, they would have to as mm. well. Yeah, and I I made a note there that in possibly imported scripts may not be allowed to run because imported scripts, if if you have not seen them. Uh, are potentially dangerous. Uh, <laughs> Correct. So I, I, th I think it's possible. I, that would be an issue. That's that would, well, probably that that would be an issue that has to be sold. And I would guess that no imported scripts would be, would be allowed to run until we figure out how to make them make sure they're safe. And okay. then, um, and I've got, then I've got some notes on. What fully owned means, and basically what I'm saying there, is fully owned, it has nothing to do with uh, NFTs, but fully owned sim simply means you you either built it or you put uh, used or you put it together uh, or you imported it completely with items that you owned, and you have to certify that you own them, but you don't have to to present an NFT to guarantee that you own it. It doesn't guarantee. The NFT doesn't guarantee any such thing. No. And then there's a couple of things that I thought think would be pretty easy. Users can communicate in text and voice with new by, nearby users um, in the destination world. That's probably pretty easy. Uh, if your avatar can transfer, I'm sure that, that the worlds will be able to pick up the identity. That would be part of the pro yeah. transfer process. The, yeah, that, right. Well, your identity, if, 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 yeah, transfer hasn't been accomplished if it doesn't have your identity. Well, it would have a UI, right. UUID for you or whatever. The, the issue there would be the different world using different voice standards because we're using... Uh, we're using something here, and then there's other places that are using free switch, and there's like that. I don't think that, would, that, I don't think that would be an issue because that's just going to be what you're where you're standing, whatever you're using is what you'll be using, and that doesn't really affect it's not really affected by the avatar. Uh, yeah, well, actually, I don't think the uh, I don't think the grid would even find out about it if, if it's the browser is handling that connection. The, right. The the question would be is did my did my identity fully cross over and can I join a voice session with whatever technology you're using? Yeah, and the browser it was the the, the technology is going to be a suitable for the browser. It's not going to throw the browser for a loop. So therefore, we could ex pretty much expect that that would work. Um, and let's see then well also the user can make friend connections with users in the destination world and communicate with them and te text message and voice and uh, of course that that is simply a, a database ma matter 
And I, so I would think that's pre pretty much already known how to do. We already know how to do that. Well, well, again, the thing is, um, Selby, is that like you know, in OpenSim and the hypergrid, they're all using. Um, a similar data database. I mean, some of them are using and similar software. Some of them are using older versions, mm -hmm. but they're all very similar. Um, and so when we start, uh, that's why we said that our first plan to actually teleport avatars would be another 3D web worlds built on this same tech. Because, um, you know, when we're when we're talking about crossing into a, a foreign land with different technology. Um, there's going to be a big question on how all of that operates. Mm -hmm. Do you and see what I'm even, saying? Even with, yeah, e and that is true even with the databases. I figured, you know, I thought database m management is pretty much an old, old, very old technology by now. Well, it is, but, you know, it, let's just say um, we'll do Jamie's world and my world. Let's say that my avatar crosses over into Jamie's world. Now, do both worlds have access to that database? Like, do I give that world open access to a database where the friend connections are? Or when I cross over, uh, is it only, will I only see my friends that I've made and are, are in the database that I can access on Jamie's world and not on my world? Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, yes. So, it's a permission, permissions access to get the data is the question that, that would need to be answered there. Okay. Oh, and, oh, yeah. Yeah. and just to be clear, just to add on to what she's talking about, even though something like the hypergrid has that ability, it very rarely works. I'm like I, every time that I log into the hypergrid, I... I, there are people that are there in the room with me that are on my friends list that the system doesn't know that they're online until I send them a message. Mm. And the only reason I know they're there is because I can see their avatar. And that's the basic chat that we're talking about. It, mm -hmm. The hypergrid is 12 years old and it doesn't work right. So. Well, in that, in that case, I think what you're experiencing, Jamie, is that there are many different versions of OpenSim software. And when people install OpenSim, especially just like, you know, that your normal guy says, I want a, a OpenSim region and they install it. And once they install it, it it's difficult to do the upgrades. Mm -hmm. So there's there might be like 12 versions of that software since that region or since that grid actually you know, was installed, but they never updated it. So version 12 talking to version one is probably what you're experiencing or trying to talk to version one. Like, that makes sense. Like if I'm in a room with Selby, if I'm in a, a room with Selby, like for a meeting like this, I can click on his avatar and start talking to him and the system goes, oh, he's online. And all of a sudden you see it pop up on the, on the friends list. And so I think you're absolutely right. I'm just saying OpenSim has been around a lot longer than web-based worlds, and it still doesn't work right. Well, but that is a good example of, of worlds that are similar but not exactly the yeah. same working is that, you know, but when we start, the further away we get from the same technology, the harder it's going to be. But it all really comes down to, people wanting to carry their identities from one place to the other and easy transport, right? So that first step is for us, the developers that are interested in connecting worlds to figure out how are we going to use our avatars? What are the animations that we're going to use? How are we going to use those animations? Do we have standard bone names that we're going to refer to so that we can pick up objects? That kind of thing. So. Um, you know, that would be the first step is to have developers agreeing to come together and say, this is how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. If they're interested, you know, there are, there are a lot of worlds that will probably want to stay closed that aren't interested in the interoperability. And right now that may suit them, I think in the future. Yeah. Um, may change. That, well, basically if, if, if right now they don't see it any operating and they haven't really thought of any advantages, and basically, they've got a lot of other things they want to do, and that probably is not high on their list of uh, ways to spend their time. Um, right. Well, it, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, it might be some of the same reasons as to why Second Life remained closed, whereas OpenSim um, has open borders. 
So, you know, you have the Great Wall of Second Life around Second Life. You can't um, you can't export or you can't travel from Second Life directly into a region on OpenSIM because Second Life is closed. Yeah. So and it's because they've been around for so long. And there's also some other uh, reasons that they've chosen to to keep their their walls closed up. Um, so there may be some virtual worlds out there that want to do that. But again, you know, if you are a developer and building a web world and you want to connect and have that interoperability, you know, we are really open to the idea and we would love to talk to you. Well, especially, now see if people, if, if you're building a web world and just opening it, then you probably would have some in, real interest in thinking about connecting because the, 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 can you would be connecting with virtual worlds that actually have some users. And if you don't have any users, then you stand to gain on that. Right. Um, you know, I, I just want to make sure that one other thing is, is clear is that when we say to another world, it's not to uh, another region. So like inside 3D Web Worlds, um, we have over 100 regions and you can teleport seamlessly between them. Oh, yeah. uh, you also have direct um, direct link uh, login to a specific region. So if you're a user based world and you only want people to go to your region, or to log into your region that that is accessible. If you don't want them to teleport out to another region, we can make that happen too. Although, um, you know, all of our regions currently have open open borders, so. Mm -hmm. uh, but it can be set up so that they don't. Um, correct. Yeah, we it can be set up so it's public only from people to log in to you, and then it also can be set up as private so only people whitelisted can get in. Lots of different options. I just wanted to make sure people didn't get confused to, you know, that there are regions and there are, are uh, web worlds as a whole. Yeah. And so uh, the, we're talking, this conversation mostly has been on web worlds as a whole, um, going from one web world to another web world. And that basically is a virtual world in a browser. Yeah, and, and, and this is uh, uh, basically the, um, the uh, world that, that uh, we, what we were talking about are, are, are worlds that are um, completely separate from and therefore using different technology. Everything in this particular web world is using the same technology, of course, and right. it is already fully connected um, so, so that right. it, the information is available. But if you go to another... Well, an, another term that, that we are accustomed to using is another grid. Uh, but I'm trying to avoid talking about grids now. Right. because that's, Another community, I think, is what we Yes, decided. another community, right. Yeah. There, there seem, there's a lot of com confusion of, with everyone in the terms to use. So, so how I would liken it to someone that is brand new to the idea of the metaverse and has no idea what we're talking about. Think about like where we're sitting is a room in a house. And we can easily go to any of those rooms in a house. In our case, it would be like we have a hundred different, over a hundred different rooms in our house. So we can seamlessly travel that. But if we want to go to our next door neighbor's house, Mm -hmm. and carry and carry our avatar with us that that's the question of how can we do that and that that's when they say grid or community we're talking about from one house to another house i hope yeah. that helps i hope that ho helps some of the people that are like what are they talking about yeah, that's, a good, <laughs> that's a good analogy and well so actually we're about running out of time um so i think we perhaps will close this for the present but we've covered i think some very useful dis useful discussion points and um, and I think I'll close the recording at this point then we may continue okay. talking just a little bit longer okay, okay thank you thank, thank you. you everyone bye world thank you everybody <laughs>